I hope, my dear, you have ordered a good dinner today, because I have reason to expect an addition to our family party. Mr. Bingley! Why, Jane, you sly thing, you never dropped a word. Oh, not a bit of fish to be got, oh, Lord. Lydia, my love, ring the bell. I must speak to Hill directly. It is not Mr. Bingley. It is a person I never saw in the whole course of my life. Colonel Forster. Captain Carter. No, I know, Denny. <laughs> <laughs> about a month ago, I received this letter. And about a fortnight ago, I answered it, for I thought it was a case of some delicacy and requiring early attention. It is from my cousin, Mr. Collins, who, when I am dead, may turn you all out of this house as soon as he pleases. Oh, my dear, pray don't mention that odious man. I think it the hardest thing in the world that your estate should be entailed away from your own poor children. Indeed, my dear, nothing can clear Mr. Collins of the iniquitous crime of inheriting Longbourn. But if you will listen to his letter, you may be a little softened by his manner of expressing himself. My dear sir, the disagreement subsisting between yourself and my late honoured father always gave me much uneasiness, and since I have had the misfortune to lose him, <laughs> to lose him, I have frequently wished to heal the breach. There, Mrs. Bennet. My mind, however, is now made up on the subject. For having received my ordination at Easter, I have been so fortunate as to be distinguished by the patronage of the Right Honourable Lady Catherine de Berg. whose bounty and beneficence has preferred me to the valuable rectory at Hunsford, where it is my earnest endeavour to demean myself with grateful respect towards her ladyship. As a clergyman, moreover, I feel it my duty to promote and establish the blessing of peace in all families within the reach of my influence. And on these grounds, I flatter myself that my present overtures of goodwill are highly commendable and will not lead you to reject the offered olive branch. I am, sir, keenly conscious of being the means of injuring your amiable daughters and assure you of my readiness to make them every possible amends. I propose myself the satisfaction of waiting on you and your family on Monday the 18th. Have a care, Dawkins and shall probably trespass on your hospitality till the Saturday seven night following. I shall travel as far as the turnpike in my own modest equipage, where I hope to catch the Bromley Post at 35 minutes past 10, and thence to Watford, from whence I shall engage a hired carriage to transport me to Longbourn, where, God willing, you may expect me by four in the afternoon. And here he comes. But he must be an oddity, don't you think? Well, if he's disposed to make our girls any amends, I shan't be the person to discourage him. Can you be a sensible man, sir? Oh, I think not, my dear. Indeed, I have great hopes of finding him quite the reverse. Mr. Collins, you are very welcome. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bennett, 